come out. Welcome everybody. Welcome back to Homestead Hearts. And y'all today I am out here in my garden doing what I thought I would never have to do or rather what I never really wanted to do. You all, we've been on this homestead for five years and for the last five years, I have always had a nice garden, even though we would have some pest damage, right? But you all saw me. I just got through spraying my corn. Now I'm gonna show you all this. Hey, Uncle Tiger, don't chew on that. I need this container. So let me show y'all. Remember now, just a few short weeks ago, Mr. H and I planted this corn, okay? Now I'm gonna show you all this. Look at this. This corn is literally waist high. Look at this, waist high on me, this corn, okay? And we just planted this corn a few short weeks ago and it's waist high. So you can see the growth is absolutely spectacular on this corn with what we did in this corn. If you remember, we trenched the rows. I started the corn um, inside of our greenhouse, okay? Because we've always had trouble with planting corn seed and then having the seed be eaten by ants, birds, whatever the case may be, and then we would have corn pop up in different places. However, starting them in trays works for us, and we planted them in trenches. And if you want to see that video, I will post how we did it. Um, I'll post both videos, the seed starting video and the planting of this corn as well. But you all, let's talk about this today's topic. What I'm doing out here is spraying my corn plants. You all, first of all, let me show you why I had to spray. Come on down here with me. Come on close. Don't be afraid. All right. I'm going to tip. I'm going to just tip y'all down so y'all can see. Hopefully you can get a good view without me going too fast. Can y'all see my corn? Look at my corn plants. Look at that. Just look. Let me back you up some more. Look at this. See that? Look at all of that. This was done overnight, y'all. This was done overnight. These two plants, overnight, came out, and that's what I found. Look at this. Just look at how they done ate this stuff up. This was done overnight. Now, I'm going to tell you what I had to do, okay? I literally went to the store and picked up some bt okay and i had to do it in a hurry now even though i had the bt i couldn't spray it because at the time we were getting rain and it wasn't going to benefit the plants to come out and spray if the rain was just going to wash it all off anyway right and so it's been several days actually now since I've been able to come out here. But I'm gonna tell you all something. What happened was our corn was being attacked by army worms. Yes. Now, inside of one corn plant, there were three army worms. Yes, three. And I literally had to get a thin, like piece of, um, stem or off of one of the brush I, I literally had to get a very thin piece to get down inside of the corn plant and dig the worm out come on uncle tiger because i could see him down in there i took two out i killed them both and there was one left down in there and i fished him out literally i had to fish him out and when i fished him out I squished him. I didn't even want to give him to the chickens. I wanted the satisfaction after what he done them, after what they did to our corn. 
I needed to do that. I need to take them out myself. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, you all, that's what they did to my corn. And I kept coming out here, just checking on it, making sure that there was not going to be more damage before I got an opportunity to spray the BT. All right. So, oh, by the way, that's what I'm showing you. Let me show you. Mrs. A, what you spraying? You talking, let me, tell me what you spraying. Okay. This is called Bacillus thuringiensis BT. Let's just keep it that way. All right. And this literally is good for things like worms and caterpillars. All right. And so spraying this on your crops, y'all, this is Omri listed. I know, and even though it's Omri listed, Mrs. H has never liked spraying any type of insecticide, any type of pesticide, Omri listed or not, on our crops. But my hand was kind of forced this time because army worms do just that, you know. Just look up army worms and how destructive they can be in a very short amount of time. Can you imagine having multiple army worms out here i could have come back and our entire crop could have been just about decimated right and so you all i had to come out and do what i had to do now they have also started attacking our eggplant so i'm gonna have to mix some more of this in order to spray our eggplant i literally pulled seven or eight of them off of our eggplant and they come from a moth by the way and you probably see this moth all the time and did not know that the original state of that moth started off as a larvae that developed into an army worm and then into that ugly moth. <laughs> Woo. I'm just upset with them right now. <laughs> but anyway, you all spraying the BT on them it literally takes them out. It literally stops them from eating. They really cannot survive once you spray this on your plant. But you do have to do this on a weekly basis though, okay? So today is um, Friday evening. I'm gonna get this video out tonight. Friday evening, I don't even know what time it is. Probably like six o'clock, 5.30, 5, 5 6 o'clock, something like that. But I still needed to come out this time of day to do this. And the reason why is because if you spray this product on your plants in the early morning or in the heat of the day, the sun will cause it to evaporate. And that's not what you want. You want this product to remain on the leaves. Uncle Tiger. Will you get on somewhere, man? Beat it. Okay, let me just put it up here. It's obvious he wants something to play with. All right, so you all, you want this to remain on the plant as long as possible. And that's why you typically would spray this in the late evening to give it an opportunity to just saturate the leaves and allow it to sit and do its job. This is only harmful for things like caterpillars and worms. You do not have to worry about your earthworms being affected by this product. And I will link it in our um, Amazon shop, okay? I'll link it in our Amazon shop. If you're lucky to find it at a garden center, a Ace Hardware, or a place like that, you will be able to get it in town but if you want it brought to your door, I'll post it, um, put it in our Amazon shop so you can get it, okay? Now, you all, it's not harmful to your earthworms. It's not harmful to any beneficial insects, okay? Even your pollinators, you know, like we have our beehives are right here. Our beehives would not suffer any consequences from spraying the BT on our crops at all in fact you can spray this i don't know if i said it already but you could spray this up until the day of harvest if you needed to i mean i wouldn't spray it on the day i'm gonna harvest but if you needed to spray it maybe up until a day or two prior 
to you harvesting, you could do that. This is not a harmful product at all to you or to the earthworms and, and pollinators and whatnot, all right? But personally speaking, I've just never liked spraying anything on our crops and hence the reason why <laughs> we would have pest problems out here in the garden. And even with all that the insects would eat like our tomatoes and whatnot y'all saw how many tomatoes we still harvested i mean we were still harvesting baskets of tomatoes so even with sharing with the insects and with the birds even because the birds would just come in and peck a hole in to kind of drink the water from the tomatoes they didn't want the tomato but they wanted the water from the tomatoes especially in the heat of the summer but we were still successful in having a huge harvest right now the remedy for that i'll talk to you all hopefully i'll remember to talk to you all about that in another video how we're gonna solve the issue with the birds pecking holes in our tomatoes because the the insects we can manage but the birds we need a different solution for them but you all we sprayed all of this corn and as you can see like i said this corn is doing very very well look at this corn just look at this. Just look at it. And I do have some weeding to do. I do have weeding that I need to do for this corn. And I'll get to that, you know. But for the, and we did put uh, ground cover strips down in the center to kind of help keep the weeds down in the middle of the rows. And that's working but we still need to come along and do just a little bit of weeding um, just around the corn area. The green beans are coming up as well around the base of the corn. I'll show you that. Let me put this down. But the green beans are starting to come up around the base of the corn. Let me just tilt you down so you could see. I don't know if you can see. Can you see that? <laughs> right down here by my foot there are the green bean plants. And they have started to come up. We planted the Kentucky Wonder pole bean around the green beans around the first two rows. And so they're all up. And everything is looking so wonderful. Our corn was just absolutely beautiful until those army worms came and started eating on the two corn plants that we have there. So you all, I had no choice. I had to do it. It was either do that or have absolutely no corn. There's a difference in you might share a few plants with some insects or a few tomatoes with some insects, but I will not lose my entire crop to some army worms. I'm not gonna do that, right? So no, that, that could not happen. And so I had no choice. We've never ever really had an army worm problem on our homestead until this year. Why? I'm really not sure. But we've never had an army worm problem. All the years that we've been growing here, I've never once killed an army worm, all right? But this year, there they are. But hopefully this has solved that problem. Hopefully this has solved that problem. And hopefully my concerns will, will just start to kind of fade away over a little bit of time. So y'all, that's going to do it. I hope that you all found this video helpful. Yes, Mrs. H sprayed some insecticides <laughs> on her crop uh -uh -uh. because of some army worms. I never would have did that right i think i still have neem oil from like years ago <laughs> that i have never even opened okay so now you all one thing i do want to say if you are going to be using an insecticide in your sprayer make sure that you make sure that you write on the container that what kind of insecticide it is because you don't want to put anything else in that container okay you really don't you want to keep it specifically for that, unless you bleach the container or something. But otherwise, 
I like to mark my container. So if I'm using a container that says liquid copper, I write it on the container. If I'm gonna use neem oil or fish emulsion, I'm gonna write it on the container, you know? Now my fertilizers like neem oil and maybe that liquid phosphorus, um, that, I, it, it doesn't matter to me that I use the same container for those. But when it comes to things like fungicides and insecticides, I don't like to use anything else in those containers except what I started using them in. And if I just have to do it, then yeah, I'll put some hot water and bleach in there and probably let it sit overnight, I guess. You know, even though it's safe, it's just pers my personal preference. I don't like mixing those um, pesticides and fertilizers in the same container, all right? All right, you all, and I do use liquid copper, but that's a fungicide. That's not a pesticide or an insecticide. The liquid copper is strictly for fungus. In fact, I've sprayed some liquid copper on some of our tomato plants already because I noticed that there was a fungus growing around the, the base of the plant from the soil, and I'm not sure why. So that's something that we're gonna have to figure out, but it started affecting the plant. And so what I did was I sprayed all of our tomato plants, including the soil around them with the liquid copper to make sure that we get rid of that fungus. And then I need to induce some investigation to figure out why is it happening around the soil? This is not new stuff over here, right? So, well, no, we did add, we did add some um, compost to that. But anyway, y'all, that's another video. Hmm. All right, y'all, that's going to do it for this video. Corn saved. <laughs> corn saved. BT has saved the day. So I am so glad. But you all, look at how beautiful the corn is growing. And yes, it's only been a few short weeks. And yes, we're so happy. You all about this. And this, this plot right here, you all, God willing, once we harvest this crop, we're going to follow right behind it with a second crop. Okay, we're going to do a second planting of this corn it's going to be a fall planting right so we're very excited about doing that as well that way we don't have to try to grow it all at one time and then i'm trying to harvest it all and process it all at one time right so we'll do it in batches batch number one okay all right y'all that's going to do it for this video if you like the video like the video please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos that we upload to our channel. Thank you all again for watching Homestead Heart. Thank you to all of our new subscribers, existing subscribers, and those who are contemplating and you about to hit that subscribe button. Thank you as well. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching Homestead Heart. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you. And I'm going to see y'all in the next video. And remember, y'all, grow your groceries and also cannon squad is just about that time to get in the kitchen and start preserving the harvest all right so y'all get ready i know not two folks in the north not y'all not yet not yet that's all right but we'll catch up <laughs> peace and blessings <laughs>